Facebook, all of this allows us to tell our friends what we ate for breakfast cereal. But those of us who understand it's not about us, it is something larger than us, and that's something that everybody with faith or lack thereof agrees, that it's not about us, then you will have an incredible afterlife. It might be on a global scale, and it might not be. You might be a hero to thousands, you might be a hero only to your own children. But that's how we live on, by living for a cause larger than ourselves, to which we dedicate ourselves, and which survives us. If we embraced this idea of an afterlife, it wouldn't have to be an afterthought, and we would actually inspire people to see that religion is not born out of weakness, and religion is not born out of a hope that we have some sort of immortality because we can't face death, but religion is born out of a genuine desire to make our lives into a blessing for others. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, hope I can say comrades, friends, um, if any of you have ever had the experience of pushing hard on an open door and then having it swing <laughs> in on you and fall, not flat on your face, but feel you didn't really need to give it that much of a shove. I thought I came all this way to debate the eschatological questions, the four last things. Death, judgment, heaven and hell, what do I find? Another Jewish secularist. <laughs> And, and another Jewish secularist in the incredibly target-rich environment of Cooper Union on the, Lower East, <laughs> on the Lower East Side of New York. For this, I had to get on the shuttle. <laughs> I take it, I will, I will, uh, I will not take it as um, was once said at the tribute of, um, of uh, virtue to vice, uh, the compliment the vice pays to virtue, the, the idea of hypocrisy in the first place. I take it as the, as the, the, the incremental effort of a lot of steady work that some of us have been putting in to dispel illusions in the supernatural. And in a private belief that I've held for a long time, which is that very many of the practitioners of these faiths don't believe it either. And perhaps that might be the first consolation uh, that we take away from this evening's discussion. My own task having been so much lightened, even though I retain the tiny suspicion, and I hope it's an ignoble one, um, that. Rabbi Shmuley might, might possibly be going easy on me. Uh, <laughs> and that would be a great cause of resentment. Uh, if I thought for a second that that was true, it's already bad enough that I'm the fifth person appearing on this stage, and you may have noticed the steady decline in the standard of pulchritude uh, that went on <laughs> uh, after number three had left the stage. Um, so I'm, I'm left to restate what I still want to say and have to begin with a disagreement. The idea that a person who martyrs himself and kills others in the cause of the faith will be rewarded in paradise is not a delusion of Muhammad Atta's. I, I wish it was. It would be very nice if we could say that that was the case. It is rather um, a belief firmly rooted in the holy book of the Muslim faith, the Quran. It is believed by an enormous number of people. It may not be disbelieved that someone who martyrs himself for the faith will be so rewarded. And to do that would be to challenge the authenticity of the book, and therefore cannot be done. The most that can be done is to say that somebody interpreted this mad instruction incorrectly, but we would be living in a very happy world indeed if this was just a delusion of one leader of a 19-man gang. The same, I think, can be said of I think it's, I, you'll correct me, I'm sure, surely, if I'm mistaken, but I think it's number 13 of the Rambam's uh, list of uh, articles of faith. Um, Maimonides' uh, uh, opinions that the, of what it's necessary to believe in order to be of the faithful, uh, that there will be a resurrection. Uh, it comes just after, I think, the belief that the Messiah will come, though because it's Maimonides, because it's the Rambam, he does say, Ah, though he may tarry, you may not doubt that he will come, nor may you doubt that you're due another life. Now, I'm sorry. I take this stuff very seriously because I have to deal with, as I do with the Christian version of it, put so creepily and so shadily that we bury our dead, the, the Christian faith, uh, of which I'm not a member, they bury their dead in what they call in this slightly evasive way the sure and certain hope of resurrection. Not the sureness and the certainty of, you notice. They, 
They haven't got the arrogance for that anymore, but the sure and certain hope of resurrection. These are the beliefs on which monotheism has based itself and on, upon which it continues to exert its extraordinary and lethal power. And I won't, I, I won't take your offer. Uh, Rabbi, I can't take it. I can't say all they're talking about is posthumous fame. All they're talking about is reputation. After all, people still read Shakespeare. Surely that proves that there's an afterlife. No, I'm sorry. It's, it's a confusion of categories. It's not comparing like with like. It's not even non-overlapping magisteria. It's, it's radically discrepant views of what reality is. And if, if religion would say, we don't promise you anything after death, that would be the end of it. And Shmuley would be talking ethical Judaism, 